Story recapped here. Today, I'm gonna explain a horror and mystery film called The Eye. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Somewhere in Mexico, a young woman gets attacked by several kids in her house, and they keep calling her a witch. She then takes a cord and prepares to hang herself, but she first sees a dark figure moving toward her, before finally kicking the chair out from underneath her. Meanwhile, a blind classical violinist from Los Angeles named Sidney Wells has no problem crossing the street despite her condition. She lost her sight when she was 5 years old, so she now relies on her other senses to see. After her violin practice one day, Sydney goes home and greets the security guard, Miguel, who wishes her good luck with her surgery the next day. However, Sydney struggles to sleep that night, so she gets up and stands by the window, hoping that things will turn out well for her. The next day, a little girl, Alicia, visits Sydney after her cornea transplant. She tells Sydney she's in the hospital because of the golf ball in her head, and the two immediately become friends. Then, Sydney's sister Helen arrives and accompanies her as Dr. Haskins takes off her bandages. However, Sydney's vision is still blurry when she opens her eyes, but the doctor assures her she'll soon be fine. After that, Helen admits to Sydney that she still blames herself for what happened to her eyes, but Sydney tells her it's not her fault. That night, Sydney wakes up upon hearing the ventilator of the patient next to her, Mrs. Hillman, stop. She then sees the woman leave with someone, but she can't be sure who it is. So Sydney follows them and sees Mrs. Hillman get taken away by a dark figure. But suddenly, Mrs. Hillman is all over the place, telling a frightened Sydney she's freezing before finally disappearing. In the morning, Sydney learns from a nurse that Mrs. Hillman passed away last night. After that, Dr. Haskins checks Sydney's eyes and says she's recovering quite nicely. Sydney then asks who her donor was, but the doctor doesn't tell her and says it should it shouldn't matter where her eyes came from. Sydney also asks when she'll be able to see more clearly, and Dr. Haskins explains that it varies with each patient. However, he tells Sydney that her vision isn't the issue since she's been blind for so long, so he plans to refer her to a specialist, Paul Faulkner. Before going home, Sydney makes sure to visit Alicia first. Alicia then reminds Sydney that the world is beautiful, and Helen takes a picture of them using the girl's camera. Moments later, Helen suggests staying at Sydney's place so she can take care of her, but Sydney thinks she should do things on her own. Once they get home, Sydney is surprised by her neighbors and friends. However, she feels a bit overwhelmed, so she goes to the kitchen to get a glass of water. That night, she hears a creaking sound coming from the oven, and she gets her face burned when she opens it. Then, she suddenly wakes up and realizes she just had a nightmare, but she gets confused when her room changes and goes back to normal again. Anxious, Sydney touches her interactive voice responsive alarm clock and realizes it's only 1.06 a.m. The next day, Sydney goes to Paul's office, where she talks about how she damaged her corneas when she was a kid while playing firecrackers with Helen. Sydney tried a transplant when she was 12 years old, but unfortunately, she rejected them. Then, upon reading Sydney's test results, Paul concludes that there's nothing physically wrong with her. However, he says Sydney is probably in for a shock because her eyes will want to dominate how she perceives the world, but she can't fully trust them yet, so Paul promises to help Sydney see the world for what it really is. A few days later, Sydney gets distracted when she hears footsteps outside her apartment. She then goes outside and gets scared when she sees a crying child, who asks her if she's seen his report card. The kid is shivering and obviously terrified, and he suddenly vanishes when Sydney briefly looks away. During rehearsal, Simon, Sydney's mentor, notices that Sydney can't focus on playing the violin, so they go to a coffee shop where Simon talks about working with a Philharmonic. He also asks Sydney if she's ready for the spring concert series, and she assures him that she is. Then, when Simon gets up to get their food, Sydney sees a strange woman talking about something she's about to do. However, the woman eventually disappears, leaving Sydney confused. Unfortunately, she shows up again and tries to grab Sydney, causing her to fall off her chair and accidentally hit a waiter. Simon immediately comes to Sydney's aid, but he doesn't believe her when she says a woman suddenly came at her. Embarrassed, Sydney apologizes to everyone before leaving, unaware that another waiter sees a palm print on the sugar she spilled. At around 1.06 a.m., Sydney has a nightmare about a dark figure and a girl inside a vehicle while there's a fire. She also sees some kids throwing stones at a woman's house before finally waking up. Then, her room changes again, and she sees a chair in front of her and a cord tied to the ceiling. Not sure what's happening, Sydney tries to touch the wall, 
but she gets scared when the chair gets violently knocked over. Because of what happened, Sydney visits Paul immediately after undergoing an eye test. However, Paul informs her there's nothing wrong with her eyes, leaving Sydney upset and thinking the tests are inaccurate. Sydney insists she keeps seeing things that don't seem to be real, but Paul says the way people see things is affected by what they know. He also points out that, unfortunately, there is a lot of stuff around Sydney that she can't make sense of yet. When Sydney gets home, Miguel informs her that her new TV already arrived, so Sydney immediately looks for something to watch, but she stops when she hears people yelling and cuffing outside. She then looks through the peephole and sees smoke, and without warning, a burnt man bangs on her door. After that, Sydney's room gets filled with smoke, and she keeps hearing people shouting in Spanish. Unfortunately, she starts to suffocate, and as she walks around to look for a way to escape, she suddenly finds herself in a factory. Sydney watches in horror as everything and everyone in the factory burn, and a man on fire even grabs her when she accidentally trips. Once again, Sydney sees the girl inside the vehicle, but she soon wakes up from her nightmare. However, Sydney realizes that she has burns on her arm, but to her awe, they soon disappear. Terrified, Sydney leaves her apartment and tries calling Helen, but she isn't answering. Then, Sydney gets even more afraid when a woman suddenly passes right through her, realizing she was killed in an accident. At the same time, Sydney sees a dark figure take the woman away, and all she can do is run. Moments later, Sydney finds herself in a Chinese restaurant and quickly calls Paul, asking for his help. However, Sydney gets distraught when she sees the glass breaking and the menu burning, and the restaurant eventually explodes. But when Sydney opens her eyes, she realizes that she's inside the remains of a burnt restaurant. Then, Paul finally arrives, and he informs Sydney that there was a fire in that restaurant weeks ago, and five people were killed. Confused, Sydney shares with Paul everything she's been seeing and experiencing, saying she's seeing things she shouldn't see and dreaming things she's never seen. However, Paul tells Sydney she has a disorder, adding that they need to teach her brain how to distinguish reality from imagination. Paul insists that whatever she's seeing isn't real, disappointing Sydney that he doesn't believe her and making her walk away. Once Sydney gets to her building, she sees a man inside the elevator just standing in the corner. She immediately realizes that he's a ghost since he doesn't show on the security camera. So Sydney takes the other elevator, but all of a sudden, the ghost appears inside with her. All Sydney can do is repeatedly tell herself it isn't real while waiting for the elevator doors to open, but the floating ghost slowly moves toward her. Luckily, Luckily, the elevator opens just in time, so Sydney quickly gets out and uses the fire exit to get to her floor. There, she once again sees the boy asking for his report card, and it finally dawns on her that he's also a ghost. However, the boy suddenly jumps out the window, and Sydney still tries to stop him and breaks the glass. Now bleeding, Sydney heads to her unit, but the boy reappears and starts chasing her. Sydney then walks faster until she reaches her apartment, immediately locking the door and breaking all the lights inside. After after that, Sydney cleans her wound and wraps a towel around it before knocking over her bedside lamp and clock, which announces it's already 1:06 a.m. As if that isn't enough, Sydney also closes the blinds to make sure it's dark inside her apartment. Moments later, Helen calls Sydney and informs her she's on her way to the airport, telling her sister to contact her. Then, Helen calls again and tells Sydney she'll call someone if she doesn't answer her phone. After that, Miguel arrives with Paul, and they find Sydney in her room with her eyes covered. So Paul asks Miguel to give them a minute and let Sydney know that Helen called him before opening the blinds. He then removes Sydney's blindfold and tells or he'll take her to the hospital to get her cuts sewn up promising they'll figure things out. While Sydney is getting her wounds treated, Paul talks to the doctor and tells him to keep her in the hospital overnight. Then, as Sydney rests, Alicia visits her and says she has to go because her golf ball is already gone. Confused, Sydney follows the girl to the corridor and sees her with the same dark figure she saw before. Unfortunately, Sydney fails to stop Alicia from going with the dark figure. The next day, Helen and Paul visit Sydney to see how she's doing. Then, Helen gives Sydney a letter from Alicia, including the picture she took for them. However, Sydney says she's not the woman in the photo, and when Helen tells her that it's her, she goes to the bathroom to look at herself in the mirror. There, Sydney sees a different woman in the mirror, and no matter how many times she turns the lights off and on again, her face doesn't change. Once Sydney gets home, she does a lot of research about cellular memory, and learns that all living tissues have the capacity to remember. Cellular memory also explains how energy and information from a donor's tissue can transfer consciously or unconsciously to 
the recipient. After that, Sydney quickly goes to Paul's workplace and tells him there have been cases of transplant recipients who've actually shown characteristics of the donor. Because of that, Sydney wants to know who her donor was, but Paul refuses to tell her because that's confidential information. At the same time, Paul says he could lose his license, leaving Sydney utterly disappointed. When Sydney gets home with Helen, they get in the elevator with her neighbor, Mrs. Chung. Then, when the woman reaches her floor, Sydney sees the young boy's ghost again. Mrs. Chung immediately notices that Sydney can see her son, Tommy, making Helen wonder what she's talking about. However, when Sydney tells her that Mrs. Chung was talking about her dead son, Helen just drops the subject. Later on, Sydney takes a shower and looks at herself in the mirror, still seeing the other woman's face. Sydney then asks the woman who she is and what she wants, so the woman controls Sydney's hands and places them over her eye, showing her the girl inside the vehicle while there's a fire. Terrified, Sydney breaks the mirror before going out of the bathroom to talk to Helen, telling her she needs to find out who her donor was, because everything that happened to that woman is happening to her. Determined to get answers, Sydney starts heading to County General in a cab. However, Paul shows up and stops her, informing her that her donor was from Mexico. Together, they drive to Mexico, and while in the car, Sydney learns from Paul that her donor's name was Anna Cristina Martinez. They then decide to track down Anna's mother and as they reach Los Llanos, Sydney sees a man on fire. So she asks Paul to stop the car, telling him there was a fire in that area, and she keeps seeing fire. After that, they talk to a boy with scars on his face, asking him if he knows what happened to that place. The boy then says all the doors were locked, and nobody could get out, adding that he lost a brother. Sydney wants to know how it happened, but the boy only mentions something about the witch of Abasolo before leaving with his friends. With no time to waste, Paul and Sydney drive to Abasolo and find Anna's house, where Mrs. Martinez's worker, Emilio, opens the door for them. Mrs. Martinez wants to know what they need, so Sydney asks her how Anna died, adding that she has a connection with her. Mrs. Martinez then turns around, revealing the scar on her face, and she tells Sydney that she has Anna's eyes. Moments later, Mrs. Martinez apologizes to Paul and Sydney, telling them there was a fire in the factory where she worked. Paul asks if Anna died in the fire, but Mrs. Martinez says she didn't. However, she adds that many others did, and they would have been saved if they had listened to Anna. Sydney then asks if Anna saw things she couldn't explain, and as Mrs. Martinez realizes that Sydney sees things too, she reveals that Anna was always alone because of her ability to see the spiritual world. She says that people were always afraid of Anna, and that they would blame her because she could see death. But as they talk, Sydney suddenly sees a dark figure again, so she immediately instructs Paul to call an ambulance. As if on cue, Mrs. Martinez collapses and says Anna does it every night, asking them to save her. On the other hand, Emilio comes out after hearing the commotion and immediately helps to take the woman to the hospital. Meanwhile, Sydney stays behind and goes into Anna's room, directly addressing her and asking her what she wants to see. So Anna shows her how she looked for her mother in the factory the day it burned, but some workers just forcefully took her away. Seconds later, Mrs. Martinez came out and asked what was happening, but her boss just told her to get back to work. Then, it wasn't long before the factory exploded, and the people inside got trapped. Eventually, the townsfolk managed to open the factory, but at the same time, they condemned Anna for her visions. Finally, Sydney understands what happened to Anna. Then, when she goes to the living room to check if Paul has returned, she sees a trap door suddenly closing. Curious, Sydney peeks through it and sees a shadow below, so she opens it and goes down to the basement. There, Sydney sees Anna hang herself, prompting her to repeatedly hit the pipe to which the woman's cord is tied. After successfully saving Anna, just like what Mrs. Martinez told her to do, Sydney asks her what she wants from her. Meanwhile, Paul arrives and sees Sydney on the floor, talking to someone he can't see. Anna tells Sydney to try to save the others, and as Sydney tells her she believes her, the poor woman finally leaves in peace. Moments later, Paul leaves with Sydney and informs her that Mrs. Martinez died. The two then start the long drive back home but there's a traffic jam because of some high-speed chase on the other side of the border. Meanwhile, Sydney sees the girl from her dream inside an RV, and she sees the accident when she touches the vehicle. On the other hand, Paul tries to take her back to the car, but Sydney sees several dark figures going inside a bus, realizing that many people are about to die. So Sydney forces her way inside the bus and sees a tank truck next to it that shows the number 106. Finally, Sydney understands that she's been having nightmares because Anna wants her to save all 
all those people from an accident that's about to happen. Desperate to save everyone on the highway, Sydney and Paul tell them that there's a bomb on the bus. The little girl's mother in the RV briefly leaves her to see what's going on, but someone accidentally knocks her unconscious while trying to flee. Unfortunately, the driver who's being chased by the cops crashes into the tank truck, causing a gas leak and a fire. Sydney and Paul then hurry to help the girl stuck inside the RV and quickly get her out, but the tank suddenly explodes, and Sydney gets hit in the eye with pieces of broken glass. Because of what happened, Sydney loses her eyesight again. However, that doesn't stop her from being positive in life, and she continues to play the violin with much passion. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.